Welcome to this evening's service with the Graber Road Church of Christ. We're, of course, doing this uh, via a webcast, and we are we're glad that you've chosen to join us this evening. Surely most of the church tonight are not with us, obviously. We're all scattered, but we are worshiping God together in our own homes. And we also worship, of course, in spirit, as God has commanded us. We're also excited about uh, next week as we phase in our gathering together once again for Sunday morning worship. Again, a letter is being drafted by the elders that more fully describes our plans, but first be aware that we intend to provide a similar recording as we have done most recently in the past, these past eight weeks or so. And you will find it, of course, at the Graber Road uh, YouTube channel. Additionally, we're going to try something new. We will be streaming the live worship service next Sunday morning. And what that means, if it works smoothly, that is, uh, you'll be able to view and participate in the worship as it's happening at the same time. It'll be at the YouTube channel, uh, and we hope that this works very smoothly. If it does not, uh, rest assured, we're also going to be recording the worship service as we've done in the past weeks, and it too will be available uh, on the uh, YouTube channel. Now, given the added benefit of live streaming of worship and considering uh, the potential risk associated with being together, the elders ask that the most vulnerable of our church family continue to worship from home for some time period. We hope that the continued decline in this pandemic impact will soon allow us to phase in more and more of our return to normal activities, such as Sunday school, uh, Wednesday night study, and other activities. And once again, most importantly, allow all members to be present together as all of our hearts strongly desire. Let us join in song. Of what the Lord has made, the race through one has come the fall. Where sin has gone, must go his race. The gospel is for all. The blessed gospel is for all. The gospel is for all. Where sin has gone, must go his race. The gospel is for all. Say not that he that are at home beyond we have no call. For why should we? Uh, this afternoon, the scripture reading is taken from 1 John chapter 1. Last week, you might recall, we read verses 1 through 4 together. Uh, tonight, we'd like to continue with that reading, but I'm going to add one extra verse. Uh, instead of reading just 6 and 7, I'd like to read verses 5, 6, and 7. From 1 John chapter 1. This is the message which we heard from him and declare to you that God is light and him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. If we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. I want to welcome everybody here again tonight. Uh, we appreciate you tuning in. We appreciate you getting together as a family and we appreciate the time that you have been spending over the weeks in, in Bible studies, uh, classes, and then having worship in your homes, uh, wherever you are. And we, we are excited as, as, 
has been mentioned already about the possibility of the, in the near future of uh, several of us being together. And let's be praying for that as well. Uh, continue to pray for that. If you have your Bibles, and I'll give you a few seconds to get to First John chapter, I mean, I'm sorry, to Proverbs chapter 2. Proverbs chapter 2. In just a few seconds, we're going to look at uh, verses 1 through 5 of Proverbs chapter 2. If you haven't participated in playing uh, tug of war, then I'm sure that you've seen tug of war being played. There's also uh, a game called Gladiator Hands where you, where you try to, you, you stand at a line in front of each other and you try to knock each other over, uh, take each other off balance. Or we used to play, when we were growing up, we played King of the Pipe. There was a pipe that our feet fit over. It was, it was about as wide as our feet were long. And we would get, one of us would face one way and the other face the other way uh, on the pipe. And then we would try to knock each other off balance. And the, just like King of the Hill, the one who fell first was the loser of King of the Pipe. But the best strategy, the best strategy in these games is to get your feet firmly planted in on the ground or wherever you're standing. If you're playing tug of war, you want your feet firmly planted in a way that you can be pulling. You think about these times of uncertainty that we're living in and these times that push us and the times that pull us and the times that get us off balance. And it's frustrating at times, but we need to understand spiritually that the best strategy for us to spiritually keep our feet firmly planted is to rest, is to rely on God, to rely on a son, and to firmly plant our feet on the foundation of faith. So for a few moments tonight, I want to look at several things, a few things that we need to do if we're going to stand in the strength and the first thing we're going to take notice of is taking notice of God. Taking notice of God. Many of you know, most of the people lit watching know uh, John Batchelder and his hobby of nature photography. I've been in the car with him going down the road and he'll pull over or, or slow down and point out a bird that he sees in this distance that I have. I didn't even know was there. He can go to Seaborn Creek Park and walk around and take pictures of amazing uh, wildlife shots that all I see, I'm on a trail and I see trees. But he has learned, he's trained his eyes, he's trained his mind to see what is really there. We need to do that with God as well. We have Proverbs chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. Along these lines of, of figuring out how to see God, how to take notice of God, how to contemplate God. Proverbs 2, 1 through 5, talking about wisdom and knowledge. My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you so that you, listen, incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding. Yes, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding as you seek her as silver and search her as for hidden treasures. And then verse 5 then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Learning to see God, learning to hear God, taking notice of God. We have scriptures like John chapter 10, verses 27 through 28. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Why? Because they've learned to listen to Jesus' voice. 28, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. And I'll give you a few seconds to get to Deuteronomy chapter 8. And we're going to look at verses 1 and 2 in Deuteronomy chapter 8. And as you're turning there, we need to understand that Moses is talking to the children of Israel. He's given them several commandments, several commands, several, a lot of information about what God's will is. And then he says in 28 of Deuteronomy verses 1 and 2, Now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God and observe carefully all his commandments. Observe them. Learn to see them. 
Learn to take notice of his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you above all nations of the earth and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. And then finally in this section, John 8, 47, he who is of God hears God's words, therefore you do not hear because you're not of God. If we're gonna stand firm in the strength that God supplies, we need to understand that, that we need to learn to hear him through his word. We need to learn to see how his word applies in our lives. As we go through life, we need to be looking around and finding the application of God's word and God's will and following that will. We need to learn to take notice of God. The next thing we need to learn to do is to think about God to think about God. We think about those things that are important to us. Some are negative and some are positive. Every year at the end of the summer, as the, day, as the days were winding down of summer, I would start thinking about the first day of school. I was not a good student. I didn't like school. And so the last night of summer, I wouldn't sleep much. I would just just lie in bed thinking about the first day of school. Every single year I did that. But then there are good things that we think about because they're important. What did we think about as the date of our wedding approached? Nothing but the wedding. What did we think about as the due date of our, of our children approached? The children and how wonderful it was going to be. So what should we be thinking about as the day of the Lord approaches? We need to be thinking about God. We need to be thinking about Christ. And we need to be meditating on what God is and who he is and how he is. Psalm 77 verses 12 through 14. I will also meditate on your work. Talk of your deeds. Your way, O God, is a sanctuary. Who is so great a God is our God. You are the God who does wonders. You have declared your strength among the people. We have the psalmist here saying, I have been thinking about God. And I love what I think about. He's so important to me that I can't stop thinking about him. David, David expressed him, his feelings and his thoughts in the 145th Psalm. I'll let you get there. 145th Psalm. It's a praise of David. In verses 1 through 7, I will extol you, my God, O King. I will bless your name forever and ever. That's going to involve thinking about God. Every day I will bless you. I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. I will meditate on the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works. And men shall speak of the might of your awesome acts and I will declare your greatness because I'm thinking about it. Seven, they will utter the memory of your great goodness and shall sing of your righteousness because they will be thinking about God as well. Then we need to be talking to God if we're going to stand firm in the strength. I read some articles not too long ago about people talking to themselves. I don't know if you're one of those people who talk to themselves, but a couple of the articles in, insisted that people who talked to themselves, that was a sign of genius. I got really excited because I talked to myself a lot. And I was thinking about those other people who talked to themselves. And I came to the conclusion that the authors of those articles were trying, possibly were trying to justify their talking to themselves. But we do that. And, and I'll say this jokingly. The reason I, we might talk to ourselves is because we're the ones we spend the most time with. On a serious note, do we spend enough time with God to talk to him? In prayer? Do we spend enough time with God to, to confer with Him? Do we spend enough time to God to, to, with God to let Him know how much we love Him just through our communication with Him? 
We have scriptures like 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people, here's some instruction, some motivation for us in order, to, in order to be continually talking with God. My people who are called my name, if they will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. If we spend time with God, enough time like we should, we will be talking to him. Hebrews 4, 16. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace in time of help in time of need first Thessalonians 5 17 we know this scripture pray without ceasing and we will do that the more time we spend with God and then finally Psalm 145 18 and 19 the Lord is near to all who call upon him some more motivation to talk to God to call upon him verse 18 to all who call upon him in truth 19, he will fulfill the desire of those who fear him. He will also hear their cry and save them. We're going to talk to God, and that will help us stand firm in the strength which God supplies. Then we're going to talk about God to other people. And we're going to need to know what to say, and we're going to need to know what not to say. We play a game in our house called Taboo. It's, it has a lot of cards that go along with it and, and we're on a timer and we try to figure out how best to tell the person in front of us uh, what, we're, what word we're trying to have them guess. And you might have a word on your card like oven, but there are words that you can't say like stove, bake, cook, food, kitchen. Well, what would you say? An oven. The thing that you put dough in for it to be done. The thing that you might put a pie in to finish being raw. I don't know what you would say, but th there are things you can say and things you can't say, but the idea is to communicate and get them to understand this word. We need to be talking to people about God's plan, about God's word, about his plan for redemption. Thinking about this game, my wife and her brother, Kevin, they're great at it when they play together as, as partners. They know each other so well. They've grown up with each other and a word might come up and they can say things to each other that the other, they recognize each other's code words because they know each other, because they spent time with each other. And so as we think about spreading God's word, sharing God's word, we need to understand, hopefully so, that when we spend enough time with people sharing God's word, they will respond. We will know what to say and we will know that we're going to preach the gospel only. Not man's idea of what it takes to be a Christian or to go to heaven. But we have, we have directives like Mark 16, 15. Go into all the world and preach what? The gospel to whom every creature 2 Timothy 4.2, from Paul to Timothy, preach the word, preach the word. Then we have scriptures like Colossians 1.28, him we preach warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Spending time talking to people about God. And then 1 Corinthians 1.23 but we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness. We have scripture like Acts 8, 4. Therefore, those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. Paul, at this time, was, had a license to crucify Christians. And, they, and the Christians were being tormented and they were being persecuted and they spread. But wherever they went, they preached the word. And then Acts 20:20, 20, 20, Paul's talking about preaching. And he says to the elders in Ephesus, I, you know how I kept back nothing that was helpful, but proclaimed it to you and taught you publicly from house to house. We need to be talking about God. We need to be knowing the people around us well enough to talk about God. We need to know what we need to say, and that is teaching the gospel, that Christ died, was buried, and rose again so we can go to heaven. That was God's plan of redemption and salvation. And then finally, we need to be toiling for God if we're going to stand fast in the faith, in the strength. Toiling for God. My dad retired from Boeing, the airplane manufacturer. 
up in Washington State. He worked as a Blue Street me Streak mechanic. And his job was to design and make tools that would be most likely only be used once and then thrown away. He needed to get work done, but they didn't know how to take care of certain problems. So he and his team would come up with a plan and then manufacture a tool and then, and then use it. But we've been made by God to have purposes, not just one time, but as we think about doing God's work, there will be many circumstances where we need to be many things for many people. Ephesians 2.10, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for what? For good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. We were made for a reason. We were made to do good works for God. Colossians 3.23, whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. And then 1 Corinthians 15, 58, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, be immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. We were created, we were made. We, we as Christians have a purpose that is to do good works. Those good works are, are something that we do because we love God we are working for God. We're working for the kingdom. And we want those around us to know that we love them and we're representing God. We're going to toil for God. And we're going to stand in the strength. We're going to stand firm in these turbulent times. I want to tell you about a little uh, instance back in 1862. Abraham Lincoln, while he was president, and his two youngest sons, Willie and Tad, they fell sick with typhoid fever. Willie, who was 11, died on February 20th, eight days after Lincoln's birthday. For eight-year-old Tad, an army nurse was recruited from a military hospital to come care for him. And after he got better, after he recovered, his, his nurse, Rebecca Pomroy, asked to return to her, her military hospital to take care of what she, what she called her soldier boys. So President Lincoln insisted that he take her in the presidential carriage. And as they're going through the streets of Washington, it's notorious for being muddy. The carriage gets stuck in the mud. Lincoln tells the driver of the carriage, stop. And then he himself gets out, tells him to hold the horses, and the president gets out, finds rocks, to put next to the carriage so that the nurse could step safely down. And then as he's, as, he's sharing, as he's taking her through, he says, Miss Pomeroy, if you will please put your feet, just as I tell you, you can reach the sidewalk in safety. Takes her hand, pulls her, guides her from the carriage to the walkway. And then he says these words, which are, which are very important for us to remember, to think about as Christians. All through life, be sure and put your feet in the right place and then stand firm. So we wrap this up this evening. I want to ask you, are your feet as a Christian in the right place? Have you figured out where you need to stand upon what you need to stand? And have you figured out at, through as this world is becoming more and more turbulent, have you understood and figured out that, this, that you need to plant your feet in the right place? Are you standing firm in the faith? Are you fighting the pulling and the pushing of life? Hopefully so. Are your feet in the right place as a Christian? If you're not a Christian, you're standing in the wrong place. You're standing in the wrong place. And we put information up on, on the screen every time we present a lesson. And that information is a list of scriptures that teach us how to become a Christian. And in order to become a Christian, according to the Bible, we need to listen to the gospel, listen to the word of God that we have presented before us through scriptures and people teaching us and showing us the way of God using scriptures. 
And then we need to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and then repent or turn away from sin and follow Jesus in the right direction. Then we will confess Christ as Lord and let people know that we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And then finally, we will be baptized for the forgiveness of sins. If you want to communicate with us, you can see the email at the bottom of the screen, graberpreacher at gmail.com. Or you can also go to a website that we have called freehomebiblestudy.org and you can enroll in several uh, Bible classes, Bible courses that will teach you the will of God and what he wants for us all uh, in going to heaven and how to get there. If we can bless you in any other way, let us know about that through any means possible. Uh, we love you. God bless you. And thank you for the time that you've spent watching this lesson this evening. I am mine, O Lord, I am mine, O Lord, I am in love with love, I am mine, O Lord, Jesus to thank Troy for our lesson this evening. Uh, we want to uh, conclude our worship with a word of prayer. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we are so very thankful that we have been able to spend some time today in worship together both this morning and this evening. Father, we're thankful that we have the ability and the capability to worship together uh, at least virtually. We're thankful that you have blessed us with the personnel and the technology and the equipment that we need to do so. We're thankful that we've been able to keep our congregation together in some way throughout this time. Father, we're looking forward to, as has already been mentioned, the opportunity to meet together physically very soon. Father, we pray that you'll be with us as we do so, that you'll uh, guard us and protect us and keep us safe that you'll give us wisdom as we make decisions, and that you'll bless our congregation as you have up to now. Father, we pray that you continue to be with each one of us, that we study your word, that we pray as often as we can, that we resolve to live lives that are holy and pleasing to you. Father, we're thankful for Troy and for his ability to proclaim uh, your word to us, and we're thankful for the teaching that we receive from the pulpit of our congregation. Father, we pray for those of our family that have experienced loss and that are sick, that you will heal the sick, that you'll touch the ones that have experienced loss and are suffering from grief and from the angst that occurs with that, that they know that they are loved and that you love them. Father, we pray that you keep us safe this week as we go about our activities and continue to bless us and forgive us of the things that we do that are wrong. And this is our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. If I walk in the pathway of the